Henry Nichols had a very slow beginning to test cricket. He played nine tests in 2016 and they did not go brilliantly well. Many players with these kinds of records often don't stick around, especially those in the middle order, where selectors can be far less forgiving of a string of low scores. But Nichols did, and he came good. Really good. Batting in tests has been incredibly hard over the last few years, and yet here is Nichols, with the fourth best average in tests since the start of 2017. It's just not a name that you normally associate with this level of performance. So let's have a look at the top three guys just for a moment and you get an idea of the sort of company he's in. Well, maybe not in, but just behind. There is a gap between these guys and Nichols. But he's the next name on the list and that tells you just what a remarkable run he's had over the last few years. This is a man who's been batting extraordinarily well over a long period now. And a hard period. It was in 2018 that the global batting dip started. That year, batters really struggled all around the world in Test cricket. And while we had a bit of a bounce, it's still far lower than it has been in modern cricket times. And yet, this is where Nichols made his name. When I asked people on Twitter for the most improved players in Test cricket from 2017 to 19, so many people just mentioned Nichols. And at first glance, I was thinking that this seemed like a solid bet. But he had a poor period where he just didn't make many runs. And had I done the most improved player a year earlier, he probably wins it. But he didn't win because of that dip in form. And you can see it here. Over nine tests, he just completely dropped off. And it was this that led me to wondering, obsessing over what happened. The usual reasons for a drop off like this are that someone starts struggling with pace or spin, or they get in trouble playing away from home a lot. Nichols is not particularly strong away from home, but he also hasn't played much away from home outside that first year of cricket. And despite the fellow period having overseas tests, you can see that there were plenty of home tests in there as well. Nichols' really good average over the last few years might be inflated by home tests, but this little gap here is not really about that. So then the other obvious thing is to look up whether it's pace or spin related. Let's start with pace. And quite clearly, this isn't the problem. Henry Nichols is an outstanding player of pace bowling. You remember this period is when that global dip I mentioned earlier has happened. And this was largely led by seam bowling. Actually, let's just look at seam bowling for a minute. You can see that in the modern era, it never had a year averaging under 30. And then suddenly it dropped to 25. And only this year has it just barely stuck back above 30. It's been a terrible time to face quicks. So that makes Henry Nichols' numbers even more extraordinary and shows what a good player of seam bowling he is. I mean, just look at this. If it is you and that Steve Smith bloke, chances are that you're not having any problems with seam bowling. And I just want to show you something really specific here. He's the only left-hander in the top five. In fact, let's just dump all the righties for a moment. And you can see how incredible he has been against pace when compared to other southpaws. And there is a reason that left-handers have struggled against pace in this period, because bowlers are coming around the wicket more to hunt them. Yes, I've also made a video about that as well. And that's because most bowlers stock ball usually swung the ball back into the stumps. Now most bowlers are tall and they bowl seam. And because of LBWs and DRS, they've had to go around the wicket. And most left-handers are really struggling with this. But Nichols is the second best southpaw against this new trend. And while it has paused some careers, it hasn't really affected him much at all. And you can't bowl over the wicket to him because he's incredible against that. And you can see that most players are better when the ball is over the wicket than around. But only Latham has a similar kind of split. But Latham is just not good when right arm bowlers come around the wicket to him. Whereas Nichols is still doing very well. I mean, quite clearly, pace isn't the problem of that dip. And Neva was overseas. So it is quite clear that this dip must come from a weakness against spin. Oh, if only it was that simple. This is Nichols' career record versus pace and spin. And while he's certainly better against pace and spin, there's nothing horribly obvious about his spin record. But this includes his early struggles and that later dip, because it is clear that spin is his weakest skill. So because he's left-hander, I'm gonna look at off-spin, because that is where left-handers struggle. But his average is only one less against off-spin than it is against overall spin. And as far as left-handers go, you can see that he holds up okay. But I did look at everything else and there was nothing else obvious. And if not spin, if not overseas, and if not pace, and if not around the wicket, this dip was starting not to make any sense. So then I just started having a look at the bowlers who had gotten him out. And uh, I saw a pattern, a very, very obvious pattern. Starting from the 9th of December, 2018, it was quite clear that there is a lot of off-spinning names in the dismissal column. So I had a look at his record versus off-spin since that day. I mean, I did it just for fun. But what the hell is this? This doesn't make any sense at all. 
for the first almost three years of his career, and at least some of which he wasn't batting particularly well in, he smashed off spin everywhere. And now he finds it pretty much impossible. This is not a normal thing. To average less than 20% of what you did before against one kind of bowling is just, it's bizarre. And I checked, he actually faced a lot more off spin before, over 500 balls, and he might face a similar amount now if it wasn't the fact that he was being dismissed by it all the time. You can see that he has broken through with two hundreds of recent times to get him out of that dip that we were talking about earlier. Both of them at home, which makes sense because it's New Zealand and that's where they usually play. And I just want to focus for a moment on who he made these runs against. This 100 was against the West Indies, whose only off spinner was Roston Chase. This 100 was against Pakistan, who had no frontline offie in the game. There aren't many off spinners with 50 wickets in the last five years. But Chase is really a batting all rounder, except when he plays England or Sri Lanka weirdly. So you can understand why he's at this end. But even then, Roston still took the wicket of Nichols just after he'd made 100. So I thought the obvious thing here would be that he just didn't face many good finger spinners before. Except that he did. On this list is almost all the highest wicket takers of the last five years. This is a good list of offies, and he averaged over 100 against them. Sure, he could have faced more of Ashwin, but it's a solid list, and he batted brilliantly. And we just need to look at Bilal Asif for a moment. Chances are you don't know who he is or haven't seen him bowl that much. But even though he only played five tests, he averaged 26 in them. And in those five tests, it actually makes him the most frugal bowler of modern time. It's quite clear that even if he didn't make it as a long-term test bowler, he was a very good bowler. And these tests were in the UAE and where you would expect him to take wickets. And Henry Nichols faced him a lot and did not have any troubles with him. So what about the bowlers since? Well, they're still the really good bowlers. In fact, of this list, the only two not to take him are the out-and-out part-timers. Everyone else here has him at least once. But weirdly, no one has him more than twice. Sure, there's a few Sri Lankans here, but he did play Sri Lanka at home and away in this period. It's really been offspin as a unit that has taken him, not any one specific offspin. And I assumed, wrongly, that we have had slightly less offspin since the crackdown on off his actions in late in 2014 by the ICC. But most probably because of DRS, there's actually more offspin bold now than in the freewheeling deuce retire. So usually a pattern like this comes from playing Nathan Lyon and R. Ashwin in back-to-back -back series or playing a lot of cricket in Bangladesh. But this is a long-term problem now, home and away, and against almost every single off-spinner that he has faced. It is really just quite strange. And let me prove it even more for you. The average that he has had since the 9th of December 2018 was 19.1 against off-spinners. But that's actually only including what we would refer to as pure off-spinners. It doesn't include the fact that Akila Dananjaya took him with an offy. And that's partly because Dananjaya also bowls leg spin, but just not to Nichols. And of course I checked further. And Nichols has also gone out to Joe Root, who also doesn't count as a pure off spinner because he sometimes bowls leg spin. If you were trying to keep count, let me do it for you. Nichols has averaged less than 19.1 against off spin since the 9th of December 2018, and he has been dismissed by them 10 times. And this is what his dismissal list looks like. He's managed to go out more to off-spinning deliveries than even right arm seam, which is really hard to do in cricket. And here's why. He has faced 60% of his balls to right arm seam and only 16% from off-spin. Of course, he would have faced more of it if not for all the wickets. But the disparity there is crazy. And let me make it even more simple. You can see that he goes out to left arm seam at the same rate he faces it. And with right arm seam, he actually goes out far less. But against offspin, he barely faces it and is always out there. And all these numbers are before the second innings of the Lord's Test because that's when I started writing this. And now I'm just going to add on at the end that in this test, Root bowled 40 balls to Nichols, who scored 24 runs over the two innings that he faced him, before, you guessed it, being dismissed for the 11th time from offspin. And I looked at each wicket, but I just couldn't find a pattern. There's some attacking drives, a missed sweep, turning to the leg side, outside edges, a leave that bowls him, and a reverse sweep in this innings to root. If there is a pattern, I'm just missing it. There is absolutely no doubt that over the last few years, Henry Nichols is one of the best batters in the world. But there is also no doubt at all that against offspin, he's pretty much a tail ender. And he must be looking at his career and wondering, how do you go from averaging over 100 against something to under 20? Right now, Henry Nichols is in this epic battle to remain this good between him and a form of bowling that you face less than 20% of the time. 
can he save his average from a handful of gentle off spinners?